Yes, can I start, Julia? Yes, please start, Robert. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new session on uh, evaluating using uh, Google Forms. We would like to see how we can use uh, Google Forms to be able to set our student, even for quizzes, even for surveys. So, uh, are you recording, Julia? Yes, I am. Okay, that's great. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start this presentation with an icebreaker. Remember last time we worked on uh, Mentimeter, and I tried as much as I could to integrate Mentimeter in this presentation. So. You could already be browsing dot com as last time, so you get to the page while I'm getting to the page of the game. Menti dot com M E N T dot com and my presentation. You go. Uh, menti.com and then you go to join the presentation. Great. Okay, what's the code? Oh, that's great. You can see the code. No, we can't. You, uh, the screen sharing has stopped. Yes. Can have the code. That is the code seven nine four eight five nine three. Go to menti.com, click on join a presentation, then type in the code. Yes, menti.com, click on join a presentation, then type in this code seven nine four eight five nine three. Are we all there? Yep. Yeah, I'm there. What about others? Oliver uh, is getting there. The question is, which Google tools do you know? All right. That's... Uh, typing in your answers. I think you need three. Is Fatty with us? Fatty was there last time. Yes, I'm here. Oh, that's great, Fatty. Are you following? Yes. Great. What does do you know? Um, Hello, Doris. Um, Doris, please, if you want to speak, you activate your microphone, you unmute your mic. Hello? Oh, that's great. First person already sent the answers. Google Forms, Google Maps. Beautiful. Are the others joining? Oh, two players already. That's great. Google Maps, Google Docs, Google Translate. Great. We've got another one. Translate. Beautiful. Google Play, Google Chrome, um, Inter. Any other person? I think I have. To. Oh, great. We've got another person. Great. Google Classroom. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. That's good. That's good indeed. So I've
Hello? Yeah. Okay, great. Next question. Go to the next question. What do you know about ghost forms? Beautiful. Yeah. I've heard about it. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, and Anestine finally is around. That's great, Anestine. Have you? And then uh, one person has you. For now. Okay, great. <laughs> Let me stop sharing so we come back. One person said uh, they have used Google Forms. Who is the person who said they use Google Form? Uh, that's me, Robert. The person. Ah, oh yeah, yeah. I thought it was another person, and I, I wanted the person to share their experience with us. But Julia, you can share that with us while I am changing uh, to. I'm stop sharing to going back to our presentation. Yeah, Julia. Um, yeah, so first used um, Google Forms um, when we started piloting um, an online English course in Mauritius for the British Council. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we were using them, actually we were using them as a survey. That's right. We used it as a, yeah. like a survey form to get people's um, opinions about the online course that they were following. Oh, that's great, Julia. It's good. I'm happy to hear that. But of uh, this session, by the end of the presentation, you'll be able to easily access Google tools, identify their use, easily uh, to appropri appropriately use Google Forms to make this. Um, play a Kahoot, if at all we have time, but if we don't, then we're just going, we even started late. For the outlines of the session, we have some at Google, how to access Google tools, some Google tools, forms to evaluate learners, some advantage testing with Google Forms, and a game, if at all, we have time, I said. Use uh, Google Tools. Can somebody, just in 30 seconds, James, have you ever used Google Tools? I've been hearing about it, but I've never tried it, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Yeah. It is for using the Google tools. The other advantage is that your documents are automatically saved in the Google tools. So if you're working in Google Docs, the document remains there. Even if uh, you're working and electricity goes off or your computer, the battery runs down or internet connection is off, your, what you have already done remains in the Google using. Uh, it's possible to work on a, uh, files in the cloud compute. your device, that is to your computer, in a form of a PDF or some uh, can, uh, it's also you can easily share the file. So if you're working in a, on a Google form, you can share it easily with a colleague. I think we had that in Google Classroom when Julia gave us an assignment to comment about, about the Google Classroom. Even your Google Classroom. Would... So how, how do we? Uh, what are the conditions for?
Yes, you need to have a Google account, obviously, and it is always better to work with Google Chrome. You need to have access to the internet, and then you need to have access to electricity, maybe because your battery could run down and you're, you, you're able to charge your device. So getting access, if you want to get access to Google tools, you just, it depends on the browser. If you're using like Firefox or Mozilla, you have to go to the, the browser and type www.google.com and see this appearing and can you see my uh, mouse? It is on this, this thing that is like a, with small squares, which is a waffle. You click on the waffle and then you see the Google tools appearing and then you So you type in google.com in your browsers click on on your keyboard then this appear you see this image appearing it appears then you click on How are you? where your name google tools will pop up so there are some google tools expedition five feet flight form Google Play, Google Play Book, Google Keep Hangout, Pixel, Scholar, Translate, Voice, you, yes, Chromecast, uh, Calendar, Chrome, Gmail, Docs, Earth. Yeah, there are so many of them. So now let's go to the core of our presentation, which is setting and administering test with Google Forms. Here we're going to have a theoretical phase, the practical phase of it where I actually present a test. We actually conceive our test and then we, I'm going to show you a sample test I had. And if we have time, that's why I put in bracket, we go to our game. The Google Forms interface, this is how it to you and then you have um, this, this plus sign which is used to create your form. You click on the form but there are also some templates that are existing already, some forms that Google have provided for you. If you like, generally when I'm setting my test, I just go to sheet and I modify what they have, the worksheet and I modify. But if you don't want that, you can go to uh, blank where you have the plus sign and, and you start your new test. Once you click on the blank, a blank quiz with an untitled form, you click on untitled form you put, to put the title which it could be your test, uh, English language uh, sequence one. You put, and then you start typing in your question. Uh, remember that, yes, we use this button here to be able to customize our theme. Can I just, uh, do we use this one to be able to have a preview of the test we've set. Mm -hmm. We use the setting button to be able to customize the settings. And then those are some of the issues you have on, on uh, you could, for the, the question types, you have a lot of question types you can have with uh, Google, uh, with Google uh, Forms. For example, you can see that on, at the level of question types here, you can have multiple, uh, multiple choice questions. You could import questions, you could add image, you could add a title to your form, you could add a video to your test, you could move to in the next session. And again, you always have the possibility of copying what a question as to, as to the next uh, question, 
or you can also uh, remove, cancel what you have done. And once you never click on this required, it means the people to whom you send the form can either uh, answer that question or may not answer it and it is not an issue. So the next thing is you need to go and then set your form. When you go to settings, you have the general settings. If you click on here, it means you have to give, uh, to, the form will collect the email addresses of your learners. If you need them to, to, you need to limit the responses only to one, then you click here. But when you click here, they will ask you whether they will tell that the participant must have uh, a correct email, a Google email, Gmail, and do you want your respondent to edit the uh, answers after submission? You can click here, but if you don't want them, you click on edit after submission. Do you want them to see a ch summary chart of responses? If you like, you click there and you move to presentation under the setting. Do you want them to see you? When you receive some forms, you realize that while you're filling them, you see uh, a bar that is down and that is progressing. Do you want them to see that bar to tell them how far they've gone with the test? You come and then you click on, oh, thank you, Caroline is finally in. <laughs> Welcome, Caroline. Okay, you click on show progress bar. If you want to shuffle the question order, remember that when you set your test, you have question one, question two, and question three. You might, at times when the candidate are sitting together, one can easily peep at the paper of the candidate B and then copy the answers. But when you shuffle the question, it means I as candidate A, when I take the test, when I sign in, I can go to question nine, B, with question one and that is how it is it shows the question for you and you have um, the confirmation message when they submit is it going to they re, you will say your response has been recorded and if you like you write any uh, comment for them so the next thing is you go to quizzes which is the very important one if you want to use your test as you want to use your form as for testing. This is the most important one. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Julia, are you? Yes, yes. I've muted everyone because there was you, some background noise. Oh, yeah, agree. Yeah, but we can hear you. Uh, Carry on. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, computer is, <laughs> my computer is freezing, I don't know. Oh, but can, maybe you can want to try um, switching your video off for now because I think your bandwidth is quite low and that may save some of your bandwidth. So if you just switch your video off for now and carry on, that may make it a bit better. But we can hear you. Oh, you can't hear me. Oh, I'm very sorry. Yes, Robert, we can hear you. I'm suggesting switch off your video. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay, carry on. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So I was saying you move to setting your quiz. We were at the level of setting the quiz. So, so uh, after you said the if you don't go to these quizzes, then you won't be able to assign points to your test, and it will not be a quiz. It will not be an evaluation. It will just be a survey form. So if you want it to be a test, you go to quizzes, and then you click on make this a quiz for it to be actually a quiz. And then they will ask you whether you want points to be assigned to it. Yes, you make this, you click on make this a quiz. If you don't click on make this a quiz, you will not be able to assign points to it. I hope I'm clear here. Then will you want yes. your students to read, 
to receive their grades immediately after they submit, you can click on yes. But if you want you yourself to be able to analyze everything before giving the grade to them, you click on later after manual review. If you want your student to see the missed questions, you activate this area. If you want them to see the correct answers, you can activate this other area. By uh, which are close to send, when you go there, you are able to undo, to make a copy, three link of your desk, or to print, or to add a collaborator. For example, I'm making the test with a I've been assigned to make a test, to set a test for troisième, and I'm teaching with Oliver. I can click here, and I add Oliver's email address there, and Oliver will automatically open, it will send him a message, and when he opens the message, the email, uh, he will realize that he can get access to the form, and then he can bring his own comment on the form. Yeah. Uh, the next thing is you customizing your theme. You want the colors. Which color do you want for your test? Which image? Generally, at the level of the image, I put the uh, image of the heading of the school. So, I'm, But you need to make it in a form of a picture so you can get to your computer and just take that uh, picture. And you choose the color. You choose the font size. The, the font size is the I think we really want it to be aerial. Uh, the font size, you choose it. So next thing is you move to more settings. Uh, I've explained this one already. And okay, yes, before we come back to this, I would like us to go to the practical phase of it. I would like you to be following and you're able to make a form with me huh? at the same time. So at the end, you can present us your form. Can I proceed? Yes, please. Okay, great. Let me stop sharing. And so we can move to making a form before coming back. While waiting, as I'm moving, if you have a question, you ask as I am moving to the next part of it. Hi, Robert. Hello, uh, Fati. Yes. Uh, while uh, uh, making the form, do you need to be uh, connected? Yes. If you're not connected, that is what I said. One of the conditions is you need to have, be connected as you're working on Google. Okay. It needs connection. Okay. Thank you. Not at all. Any other question? No, if there is no other question, I share my screen again and then we continue and we, we get to setting a Google test. We'll try to see how we can set one. Here you can see I am working in Google, with Google Chrome. Are you also working with Google Chrome? Yes, I am. Yes, I'm working with Google Chrome as well. Oh, beautiful. Is there any other person? I can't see Oliver again. <laughs> okay. So if you're on Google Chrome, go to this waffle. You see this uh, like rectangles or circle. We call them waffles. Click there. Once you click there, you see Google Tools appearing. You scroll down. If you don't see Google Form, the Google Form app, generally, I, I don't. Robert, we can't hear you. Sorry, Robert. We have to click on what? Click on the waffle. Oh, let me this waffle. 
The waffle, this, this uh, point, these rectangles or circles at the corner of the picture or the initial of your name, have you seen? Uh, have you seen it? No. I'm pointing, look at the screen. I've seen it, yeah. After I've seen it. Well, I have those yes. dots. Yes, where you have this dot or this. Uh, okay. Uh, ha have you seen Fati? The dot? Yes, have you seen? Uh, I can't see the dot. Fati, uh, look at where he, look at where Robert's mouse is. Okay. You look at the screen and see where his mouse is. Okay, but with my phone, I can't see her. Huh? Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're using your Google oh, yeah, yeah. account. Fati, you need to be yes. logged into your Google account to see it. Oh, okay. Yes, I asked her whether she was on Google and I think she said yes. Yes, I have a Google account. Are you logged in? If you're not using a Google, uh, you are not using Google Chrome, go to www.google.com, then you, you enter, you validate, and then this other page where I am will open. If you're using maybe Firefox or Mozilla, you need to go to www.google.com. Once you click there, you will be on this page. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see this page. Yes. You beautiful, Fatty. Mm -hmm. You click there. Okay. Are you there? Okay, so what do I, what do I look for there at uh, www? So when you go here, if you don't see the Google form, you click on Google Docs. Can you see my screen? Google Docs, click there. Are you there? Still searching. Okay. You will see this. You will see dots, dots. Huh? Are you there? Are you there? You're searching. I am there. All right, I'm there now. James? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm still struggling, but I can't see this particular page. I don't know why it's not like this. I see Google, but I don't see this. Yeah, but you need to log into your account. It doesn't work unless you're logged in to your Gmail. All right, all right. Okay. Log into your Gmail first, then you can see it. Okay, thank you. You can continue, Robert. I can follow, but it's my. I don't. I can't see it with my phone, but with my computer. After I will try it. <laughs> I'm not joking, but like you click on the waffle. You click on Google on dots. Oh, my computer is freezing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Can you see what I'm doing? Oh, yes. Yes, we can. A bit slow. Good. I am Yeah, we can see can you, it. Are you on this page? Yes, we can see it. Are you on this page? We 
can see Hi, your page. Oh. Okay, can you? Okay. Okay, you click on. Oh, it's the same. You click on main menu forms. It is searching. Yes, and you're on the page of Google Forms. Yep. You go to the plus to create Mine is seeing in French. It is searching. Okay, finally, there are a lot of Can you see my screen? Yes. The yes. connectivity, I have a lot of connectivity issues. You see it is turning, turning, and turning. Mm. Yes. Let me go back. Yes. Let me try to go back and see. <laughs> oh. Maybe you disconnect and connect again. Yeah, I've, I've changed the operator. I'm now, I was using uh, Camtel, then I'm on Nextel now. <laughs> Let me see how it works. So yeah. you go to main menu, then you go to Google Forms. Mm, that's it, oh, beautiful. I think this one will work better. <laughs> then you get your blank quiz that appears. You click on the blank quiz. This one is working better. Oh, great, beautiful. Then you are on this page. Are you there? Yes. Beautiful. You go to uh, themes. You have themes here. Do you want, do you have a heading for your school? or do you need to put any heading there? You click on uh, choose image, select image. You click there. Oh. And there are images that exist already in uh, Google on the web that you can choose for your test if you like. But generally, I don't use this, these images. I go to import. I don't know whether you upload from your computer. You click on upload if you like, or you click on photo. If you click on photos, it takes you to your all your Google photos. If you have synchronized your phone with your uh, Google photo, all your photos, you will see them and you can select the one you like. Or you click on import upload if you want to upload them from your computer, then you browse. Hello, hello Robert. I didn't see where you got yes. the, the themes. I didn't see where you got the, the icon to click on things. Seems mine has You just go that. up, up, where you have, have you seen the icon uh, uh, where you have send? The purple icon. Okay, yes. Yes, the first one, the first icon which is like a, a mango. Click on oh, that okay. one which is like a mango. Click okay, on it. Good. Okay, thank you. Have you done so? Yes, I am okay now, thank you. Then click on select image, and then if you want an image from your computer or from your phone, or if you want the images that are on the web, you just choose. 
But if you want the one that you want to take from your computer, you click on uh, upload. From your Google Photos, you go to Photos. So I'm selecting the computer. Are you all with us? Yes. Yes, I'm here. I don't know which image this one is, but I'm in. good. You click the, you choose the image. It's going to import it in automatically. I've chosen my computer. It's taking a bit of time because of connectivity, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. nice it's made out of rambo I don't know what that is. That's very good. It has a nice strawberry. Uh, Have you selected your image? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I have selected two, but connectivity. Yes. Uh, Connectivity is trouble. Yes, I've selected. You see, connectivity, the image is not coming. Yeah. I mean, let me just close. Hello. Hello. Yes, can you hear? I can hear you. Okay, great. But I can't see anybody again on the screen. Oh yeah, it's okay now. Connectivity issues. Oh great, guys. Are you are you on this at this on this page? Yeah. You yeah. click on OK. Has your image finally come? Um, not yet. But we I think we can ignore the image and continue. Oh, okay, <laughs> let's ignore yeah. and continue. Yeah. I've clicked on OK. Yeah, the images are not necessary for the document. You can leave. The image is angry. Yeah, they're nice I'm to have, you. but you don't need them. <laughs> okay, that is great. It's just for you to oh. see whether how to put the heading. Then you come to the color. You, you what? Which color do you need for your background? You see, if you click blue, it becomes blue. If you click red, the background becomes red. If you click mm -hmm. on yellow, it becomes yellow. Yes. And then you move down to the style. Do you want it to be just the simple style or this type of decorative style or the formal style or this? How do you want the right things to be? Generally, I allow the right things just to be simple, uh, simple. And then that is all for this one. Then you close theme. You move to, this one is preview. You've not yet done anything. So you go to parameters, settings. This is the most important. Are you on settings? Yes. Yes. Here you have the general settings. Do you want the form to collect the emails of the participant? Yeah, that's better. 
the, the emails of you. You click the... You want uh, them to see... Uh, to receive an email notifying them uh, of their workplace. Yeah, you that's yes. the ask for a copy. Yes, or do you want them to always so whenever they, they answer, they receive an email that yeah. responds to only one answer? Because mm. with Google Forms, there is a possibility you see when you usually receive some forms, you answer and they say, Do you want to give another response? No, in that case, you limit to only one. But when you limit to only one, your participant or your student may must have a Google account to be able to access your form. If, if not, they won't be able to. So do you want your student to be able to modify the answers after submitting? You click on yes, but generally it's no, because you, once they've answered, they've answered. Do you want to, them to see um, the spreadsheet showing the results and everything, the whole results? If you like, you click yes, and then they're going to see that, and then you go and save. Then you could come back to the other settings, to presentation. How do you want it to be seen? Do you want the progress bar to be shown? Generally, I click yes, because they must see a progress bar to see how uh, much they still have to do. And then, do you want the questions to be shown, to be shuffled? Yes, generally I say yes. But be careful, when you shuffle the questions, when you have sections like, like a grammar, vocab, and they might shuffle and a grammar question goes to vocabulary. So if you have sections, it's not good to click shuffle here. But if you don't have sections, you can shuffle your questions. If you didn't put it into sections, you may shuffle. And do you want them to see the link for another response? Yes, generally I click no. And what answer do you want them to see? Your answer has been recorded, yeah. And then you continue with quest questionnaires. On your form, you will see quiz if you, uh, your computer is in there. Uh, the language of your computer is English. You see quiz. Are you with me? Yes, we are. Beautiful. Yeah, yes, we are. With you. We are. Great. Yeah, you need to come right, right to right this, this button. In my computer, it is French and it is saying converti and questionnaire. On your own, you will be make this a quiz if it is English. If you don't make this a quiz, then you will not be able to put points. Yes, you make it a quiz. Once you click on make this a quiz, you will see that you are able to put marks there. And then, do you want the results to be published immediately as the, your student send their responses? You can say yes. So once they submit their response, they see their marks. You can click there. But do you, if you want, don't want, you click on later so that you'll be the one to send the results to them, not the Google sending the results. It depends on you, but generally I say immediately and depending to on the exam. And do you want your students to see uh, incorrect questions? Yes, I activate so that after the test they can know I didn't answer question one well, I didn't answer question two well. Yes, do you want them to see the correct responses, I just say no. Yes, or you could still activate, depends on you. Uh, do you want them to see the number of points, the marks allocated to each question? I generally say yes, because as they are working, they need to know uh, the mark allocation. And then once you've done with this, you save. Are we okay this far? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Beautiful, good. So you can now see, because I selected email addresses to be obligatory, you can now see that it is coming here. Then you go to first question. Remember that if you, you need the names of your, your students, so the, your first question should be name. You just write name and then you don't put any question there. Are you with me? We are. What uh, we are. 
beautiful. And then you go and select required. If you don't put required, they may not answer that and they don't put their names. So you put name and you put require. And then you come and select, instead of multiple choice, you come and select short answer. Re short answer on my computer, it is response good because it is in French. Are you with me? Yeah, we are. Beautiful. You are finished with your first question. You move to the next. You come to this plus sign. Oh God. You move to this plus sign. Have you seen the plus sign? Yes. Yeah. Click there. You, it, it goes to the next question. Next question, do you need to have the email addresses of your country? No, the emails are already there. You might need their phone numbers if you like. But generally, if you don't like, you just move to, uh, maybe it is section one, and I write uh, grammar. I write one, section one, grammar. So I just put one, and then I put uh, grammar. For example, here I am. And once you put grammar, it is just for section one. You move to the next. You will allow it like that and move to next, or you put a response code or short question. Then you continue. It is not a required question, so you just move to next question. Are, we, are you with me? Yeah, we are. If you have instructions, then you put grammar and then you write the instruction. Answer these questions, do this as we usually write. You write the instructions on the... Then you move to the next question, for example. We're going to stop after only one question. You put like question one, for example, type any question, grammar question that you, you think you can type. Yesterday, my, this is my question, type your question. Yesterday, yesterday, I, dash, 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 I want to make I, Dash, dash, dash to the market. Uh, in bracket, as we usually put, go and to the market. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Then you come and choose option one. For option one, I want to say, yes, CD, I go, I go. I want to, you come and add option two. Yesterday, I go. And then you, you scroll down. And then you add another option. Yesterday, I went. And then you add another option if you like. Yesterday, I am um, going. Or gone, or gone. Yes, or gone. Good, James. So this is it done. And you can see that you, if you want to choose the question type, it is showing that this, my question is a multiple choice question. Okay? Yes. Are you with yes. me? That's great. But if That's you, we will just, we will do two. Now you come and click on answer, key answer. I, on my computer is showing corrige in French. You click there. Are you with me? I, I didn't see that, Robert. Where is it? Okay. All right. That's fine. Down, right down. Can you see? Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen it. It's okay. Click on it. Yes. You click it on it, and then you come and choose the correct answer. My correct answer is went. I'm happy to realize you're following, Carol. That's great. Have you seen? Yes. Yeah. Good. And then I want to come and add the points to my question you come to this area look at my computer my screen you see where i am yes. yes good you click on the triangle up it gives you one if you would want the question to be on two you click two okay, okay. have yes. you seen yes good great. great this is great once you have done you come and click uh, uh, I don't know what is showing on your computer, but mine is showing terminate. That is end the end of finish. Or you click there. Have you done it? 
Yeah. Beautiful. But if you don't click here, which is required to show that the question is obligatory and you put a star there, your student may not answer because you didn't say it was a required question. So you come and then you click on require. Have um, you clicked on required? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Next thing is you see these three dots. You click there and you might want to write a description, but generally what I click there to do is just that I want them to shuffle the, the options. So even if you're with me, James, and we open question one, your first option might be going and my second option is when. So your students, even if they are sitting together, they might still be confused which one to choose. So I say, I click on shuffle the options. That is what I generally do. Have you done so? Yeah. Beautiful. And you might think that your question needs something, uh, an image. You might want an image to guide your uh, learners on answering the question. You click on image. We, our connectivity is not good, so we will not really do that, but I just want you to see. You click on image and you go and upload any image from Google, from photos, or from your computer that you have and put there for your comp to guide your students if you like. But we're not doing that. Let us leave it allow, <laughs> allow it because of co uh, connectivity. So we come back. If you want to add any YouTube video that you know, you can go to YouTube, you click here. You, you have a video that can help your learner answer the question. You just come here and then you click the title of the video. Generally, if I have a vocabulary, an essay question on maybe music, I can type, uh, uh, on, no, not on music, on media the role of media. I just type the role of media and I select a video on the role of media. And then I say, after watching the video, answer the question. So we're not doing that. I'm just showing you what you could do. Then once you, you can add a title to your question, to the description, but generally this one is not necessary. So you just go to plus, we limit ourselves to only two questions for now. Are you with me? Yes, so far yes. so good. If yes. you like, you can uh, delete your questions delete. or you, you duplicate your question. Yes. So, it can, so if I click on duplicate now, you see that the same question will go down. But I want to add a question and I choose a different type. So you see, we will limit ourselves, on, ourselves only to two questions. So I come here, instead of multiple choice, mm -hmm. I click on this triangle. Mm -hmm and I choose a different type. I want the paragraph now, or I want a short answer. Like, short, uh, short, answer. short answer means like, for example, a closed test, the closed test that we usually have. Um, yeah. My name is dash, 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 dash. That is short answer question. Mm -hmm. If I want a paragraph, because some people say, can we evaluate AC with uh, Google form? Yes, if you want, you just click on paragraph. And then you come now, you write your question, write an essay about da 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 da. Write, oh, write an essay. About Robert's presentation. Write an, an essay about, I'll just put da 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 da. You write everything that you can write. But with this one, the problem with this one is that you cannot put the correct any correct answer because yeah. it's an AC. What is correct? You just allow it, but remember you have to come and write require because okay. if you don't put require, they will may not answer it and the form will accept. But once you require, once they've not filled that aspect, the test cannot come to you. So you okay. put require. And if you like, you can put a picture and then you say, look at this picture and this write an AC on this, this, this. If you like, you click here to put the picture. Or you come and click here to put a video that they will watch before answering the question. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yes. Yes. We are, we are. If you want to move to the next section, you just click on these two. Section one was grammar. Now you put you click here, you put, it goes to, sec, you put section two. That is section one. That is mm -hmm. finished. 
you might want to come and put section two AC or no, we already wrote AC. It's just an example. So vocabulary, so, yeah. Vocabulary, yeah. And then you're going to do the same thing. You carry out the same thing, looking for the importing a question. If you have another Google form uh, where you had some uh, question, you can go and import questions. the questions to this other one and select the ones you, you want to select. That is it for now. I want okay. to stop there at the level of question. Yeah, something very important I need to tell you is when you go to um, question type, please, when, once you select what I've realized with my students, once you select a short answer, for example, for the question, and then you say, my name is, for example, my name is, once you put the correct answer, it, it accepts only one correct answer. Oh, my name is, I didn't write it well. Yes. So once you come and put the correct answer, you put the key, and you put the correct answer. If I write my name is, and I put the answer as Robert like this. If I write in small letters and my students write in capital letter, it will mark it as wrong. So you need to give them the instructions. So you say write all media in capital or write the answer in a small letter or write in hyphenated word because if it is not like that, it's a computer marking. If with Google Forms, if you have put small letters, it will mark it as wrong. If you have put, so you need to give clear instructions. Are we uh, together? Yes, yes, sir. yes question. Uh, you see? I don't know whether I understood you well. What if I say, what is dash, dash, dash name? And I go to the correct options and I put my, your, his, her. Is the computer going to take into Google Form going to take into consideration all the options I've given, or it just going to choose only one? No, it can take because you can see ajouté une réponse. But with Google Forms, they will accept once they have not written all the correct answers that you've put. Your form will reject. I think, so I'm think uh, uh, Robert, uh, I, I don't know why you, you must include the correct answer there. I think so. Yes, you, you do on, only one correct answer, not two options of correct yes, answer. Yes, one. Yes. Yes, only one. I so think that's where correct. Ernestine is, is coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, the best options are, are not to be taken into consideration. Ernestine? Yeah, Ernestine? I said, so if I write my name is Robert and I say another name, maybe Ernestine, it's not going to take Ernestine into consideration. Yes, uh, they will answer once they will take an scene into consideration, but your student need to write the two that you have provided, an scene and Robert, for the form to accept it as correct. I see. Do you understand? Oh, I see. So, they yes, so it, it is not like if they can accept Robert and allow an scene, or they can accept, they must write the two for the form to accept. If they write only one, the form rejects it. So you need to be very clear with them there. We will, if Julia gives me the opportunity, we will work on another uh, program that can allow you to choose one or the other if we have the opportunity to be trained. Good. So okay, I can- Robert, Before you move ahead, uh, can I ask a question that's related to that of a nice thing? Uh, when you say my name is, how, uh, is it possible for the computer to accept any name even you have given uh, a specific name like Robert. No, what I'm saying, telling you is you are the pe person who inserted the correct answer to your question. So the computer will not, you're the one setting. If you have put Robert as a correct answer, it will mark only Robert as correct answer. It cannot All accept right. anything. All right, which means that it is better not to put any option at that level. No, no correct answer. Yes, you just need to allow only one. Make it in, make it in, if you choose short answer, make it in such a way that they will only have one answer to write. One but, correct answer, yeah. And one correct answer. And specify to them that they should write it either in capital, if you wrote your correct answer in capital, 
or in small you... letters if you wrote your correct answer in small letters. Because if you wrote my name is Robert and I put Robert in small letters as I put here, you write it in capital, the computer does not accept. Yeah. Uh, it means that some questions are not possible with, uh, with, uh, with this. You cannot ask a question yeah. like my name because every person will have a different name. That yes. Is not appropriate. Uh, no, I'm just this James. This is just a, a sample example. It's not like you're going to ask your uh, student my name is as a question. All right, understood. It's just okay. a sample. For, I just wanted to explain this issue to you. It's not like it's, it's okay, a question. yes. Yeah, just to make sure that I understood. So if I put what is dash 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 name, and that I put my answer instead of putting answers as my his her your, I can easily say. Use first person pronoun so that my short answer is my. Yes, good. You give the instruction. Use first, first person pronoun and write it in capital or in small letters, depending on how you put the correct answer. Do you understand, Anastine? Yes. It's understood. Okay. Uh, yes, I, um... but again, the other thing is you can allow to, you can write it the way you want to write. In case you have not put points and you want to mark it by yourself, but what I want to avoid here is marking scripts. Yeah, so exactly. if you know that you won't go and mark it by yourself, you can allow them to write their options. You will receive the script and then you, you will mark. But I don't want to mark the script again. I just want them to do it and the computer marks it for me. Okay, exactly. except the essay part of it. Are we are we together? Yeah, so um, I think if, I think it's okay now. I think if I understand Robert well, I think the whole issue is to be very clear about instructions. Yeah. Of course. Okay, yeah. that's I exactly. Can, yeah. can we continue? Yes. It's great. So uh, you have a lot of type of questions that you can ask your student, like here are the types of questions if you can see my computer yeah. you can have short answer you can have paragraph you can have multiple choice you can have all of these are types of you can have a grid you can have these are the types of questions that you can have for your student now you've done you have finished your test you go to the setting i think we had already done the settings of the test you go to these three dot have you seen the three dots between my name and send? Yeah. Yes, you click there. If you want to copy the whole of this test, you click on copy. If you want to take it to the to cancel, to move it to um, uh, well, draft, time. you go yeah. there. And if you want to copy the link to your test, which is very important because you want to share the link to your student, you, copy, you click on link. If you want to print your test, yeah, you can print it and you can even transform it into a PDF if you click on print. Yes, when you click on print, if you're working on uh, Google Docs, yes, you can see your test appearing and then you choose the, uh, the type of, do you want it in a PDF format? format? But if you're not working on Google uh, Drive, you will not see this one. If you're on Mozilla or Firefox, you will not see this PDF. So you might want to transform it in, print it in a PDF, or save it as a PDF copy in your computer if you like. You do this, and then you come and save in your computer as a PDF, and you go and print if you like. This is an option. I didn't choose, I don't want to, I just wanted to show you this. and. The next thing is, I want to add a, a colleague to my, yes, I want to add maybe uh, Oliver as a collaborator for this, mm -hmm. for this test. I'm mm -hmm. setting the test of Troisium with Oliver. Mm -hmm. So I click on add a collaborator. Are you with me? I'm with yeah. you. Yes. And then I come and add the email address of Oliver. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes, you can see That's some email idea. addresses appearing yeah, on yeah. my screen. If I had Oliver's email address, once I click on O, it appears. If I had Anestine in my Google 
account as email address i will just click and this thing it comes then but if you don't have you can type in have. the email account. <laughs> <laughs> do you have an esteem it's that and you should have it's anestin at gmail.com okay anestin anestin at gmail anestin with e l u m l u m l u m l u m at gmail.com gmail.com great i have Reading your name now, and then I write terminate. I send you the link. And I think you now. If you open you your mail, you will see that you are a collaborator with me on this test, and we can work on it together now. So that is the option. But you, if you want now to send your test to your student, if you have their list of email addresses, you just copy the whole list of. And then you come and then insert the email address. It's all the whole list if you have it here. But if you don't, you come and click include a formulaire that is putting the form into the email before sending to them. And then you come and click send, or you can still add another collaborator. But generally, what I do. You can send by email. What I also do is we have we can have our WhatsApp group. I just copy okay. this link. You copy the link. Are you with me? Yeah. Yes. You copy the link. You click on copy, and then you can go to our WhatsApp group or the WhatsApp group you have with your student, and then you put the link there with the instructions. Exactly at the time you have the test with them. You click. You say, "Okay." At this particular time, they are already informed. They know that they are writing their test at eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, you put the link there. They open and they write the test. And automatically, when they finish, it comes to you. If you want to control whether they are not cheating or not, you can uh, combine Zoom and uh, forms. So at that time, as you are sending the link, you create a Zoom meeting. They are working. You can see as and you ask them to activate the uh, videos, so you can see as they are working. Am I okay till then? Yes. Yes. Beautiful. That is great. So you have done everything. Is saved automatically. You don't need to be saving. It is saved automatically. I've already copied the link. I will share the link when I stop sharing to our. Amnesty has already shared it. <laughs> oh, Anestin! Oh, wonderful, Anestin! Let me stop, Anestin, and then if oh no, we will work on. I wanted you to share your this thing. It's okay. You've shared your no, name. I, I yeah. <laughs> I wanted you to share your screen for us to see your desk, but it's okay. <laughs> stop sharing. Is it okay with other? Hello. Can yeah, you hear well, me? Yeah, you? it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, beautiful. But I can't see you again. I, it's okay. That is great. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, that is it about uh, Google um, Forms. I want now to uh, for. Uh, I would like us to get to the advantages of uh, Google Forms. What do you think could be some advantages of Google Forms? Can you tell us some of the advantages you realize we can have with Google Forms? Yes, Robert. Yes, Anastine. Yeah. yeah, I feel the first advantage, if we can manage it well, is that it's going to reduce marking, which is uh, a very big trouble for teachers. Carrying papers around and taking four or five hours to mark tons of scripts, since the computer will be marking for us and it will be done electronically. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's very practical. Beautiful. Any yes. other person? Yes, uh, Robert. I think another advantage, uh, see in the same light, it actually helps us in marking, and we can mark. It's, we can mark uh, every other aspect except uh, essays. Yes, good. Uh, you can uh, mark uh, any other. Uh, we, can, we can mark uh, reading comprehension uh, by conditioning the students to seek answers. 
you can mark uh, is you can set uh, vocabulary exercises and grammar exercises. Only is it that is really difficult to be done through the Google form, but you can send it and mark that one manually. So that will help us to really work faster by only marking one section, for example. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, I, I see that it is very good in for, for record keeping. That is every aspect that you do, you can easily have a record rather than recording uh, marks on mark sheet, which at the end you may misplace them. So but once you are done and the marks are recorded, you know, it, it, it can stay for as long as, as possible. So it's very good for stock taking too. Beautiful. Fatih okay. wants to say something. Yes. Uh I also want to say something. Is Fatih on already? Yes, Fatih. Are you yes. ready? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, yes. Uh, for me, it is great but because it helps teachers uh, uh, making the uh, quizzes. For mm -hmm. example, if you want to make a quiz and you need vocabulary or also uh, pictures too. You know, students are fond of pictures. Pictures yes. also and uh, the YouTube. These are mm -hmm. really things that I really like. This will help Beautiful. them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great, Fati. Yes, uh, the other person was Caroline. Caroline? Is Caroline still connected? Yes, uh, Robert. I, I think on, I'm on. I'm I think that is good because, can you get me? Yes. Are you getting me? Hello? Yes. yes. Can you I'm get me? You. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes. All right. What, what I'm saying is that I really love this because uh, about the testing, it takes care of all the forms of uh, question, the question forms, multiple choice, uh, short, question, uh, short answers or short questions and answers, and also paragraph and takes care of all of that, meaning that it can make it very holistic. So I also... Since it gives that allowance, then it's really good. That's great. I can see two other people have raised their hand, but I can't see them. <laughs> Is there any other person who like to say something? Okay. There is an aspect that I haven't shown you. I will send you a quiz after this. If you answer, you will answer that quiz. And if Julia permits, next time I will show you how the results comes, uh, how the results come to you, and how you can analyze the results without having to take down the pen and calculate the statistics because the statistics they come automatically to you. So if Julia permits, next time we might be working on getting the results of your analyzing the results, or it's just. It can even just take like 20 or 10 minutes to see how the results are presented. And we continue with a new session. We can have a new session within 20 minutes or 10 to see how the results are presented. Actually, uh, the benefits of evaluating with Google Forms is that there's no use of paper. So you're not carrying those big bags that they call teacher's bags in our area. You're moving with a big bag. Everybody knows it's a teacher. It's economical. You have no photocopies. So you do not have any conflict again with principal or student because you need to meet the principal. I need to 100 copies. Oh, I don't, have, I don't have paper. I don't have paper. Students, you say give 50 or give uh, 25. They say, please, madam, it's too expensive. So you no more waste of time for marking, no nerves issue because you will not be marking and no more scripts miss. At times somebody says, I submitted, you say, but I didn't see. You say, but madam, I gave, yes, sir, I gave my script. No more script with stains from oil. At times you were marking and a child passed and was eating and then you got out on the a script of student or food like nothing like that the script it's very difficult to meet the writing no the handwriting no problem with handwriting again no stress calculating statistics anymore my dear teachers real and reliable statistics you get rapid rapid publication of results you have your test immediately you have the results 
reduction of cheating, no cheating again, is uh, easy and fast, efficient carrying out of test corrections in class as well as remediation lessons from reliable statistics. Easy to share with colleagues and others. And it is also easy to keep and without taking down marks. I think uh, Fatih wants to say something. Fatih? Robert? Yes? I want to know, how are you using it uh, with your students as the phones are not allowed at schools? The phones are not? How, her phones are not allowed at schools. How are you dealing with your students? Oh, we started using it especially at this period of COVID-19. Yes. Uh, but we could also be using before. You send them, you can send it to them as an assignment to be done at home. And then yes. they do it at home. You're okay. not obliged to do it only in school. You could do it as a, send it as an assignment to be done at home. They do it at home and then you receive the answers. Um, and how do you make Thank sure you. they don't Thank you. cheat? That they don't? Cheat. Very important. Cheat? Yeah, or get someone else to do yeah. it. Okay. Yes, if you don't want them to cheat, I said you, you program it, you set a time, you say the test is at three o'clock. At three o'clock, you get a Zoom meeting where all of them are connected and you tell them to activate their videos. As they are working, you see how they are working. But again, we're training people because we want them to be responsible citizens. So you train your student to give them the values. You're not only teaching the English to them, but you want them to be responsible citizens and you inculcate the ideas of um, life skills to them, knowing your own performance, knowing if you train them to that uh, effect, then they won't, they won't have any need of teaching. And then you tell them it's a trial. It is, you want to know your level. Groom them to know what exactly you want them to be. But and do not make it to be a test like, I want you to fail. I want you to do this. No, give them possibilities. I was working with somebody yesterday who told me, I pr propose a game to the person and then a teacher to, to the people and the teacher said, I can see there is a possibility of redemption. So redemption question. I wanted to use this in my class as test, but I can see there is, I said, but why? Redemption is only one question or two. Why won't give the, your children, the, your student, the possibility of uh, having another one? I know, I think I've answered you, uh, Fatih. Yes, Robert. Actually, yes. I would like to add something. Uh, yes. Sometimes, if you are using it consistently with your learners, uh, you can try one day to ask them to do the same question in class. And then, uh, if they give a different answer uh, other than the one they gave there, you try to show that you actually follow them up. That uh, online, you get this answer. Why is it that you are giving a different answer now? Does it mean that somebody is doing it for you and so on? Just to make them conscious that uh, you can follow up, you can notice that uh, they yeah. are actually doing it by themselves. Thank you for your contribution, James. Yes, but again, if you can combine it to Zoom to reduce that, it is possible. So that is it for our presentation today. You, you have some links. So I would like you to use these links when I put the, uh, the presentation in our WhatsApp group, you could use this link to know more about uh, setting up and using Google Forms as quiz and setting your test. So I think if you don't have any other question, if you don't have... Hello, Robert. Yes? Yes, just a quick question. Uh, with regards to teaching, is there a possibility of uh, setting a time limit for for the for answering the, the the quiz? Let me say, if I give my test paper, can I say from the time you begin? If I say it begins at three p.m. and you have thirty minutes or twenty-five minutes at three twenty-five p.m., it ends. What it, it disappears, whether you've done it or not, you can no longer manipulate. Is there? Is that? Do we have that option? Maybe there is an esteem, but for now I haven't yet used that option, so I can't really okay. answer you clearly on that. 
Yes. Okay, I, th I think maybe we'll need to do, do research because that could be helpful if there yes. is that kind of option. So that why the student spends time looking left, right, he just disappears, he just uh, 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 sees that the, his computer is free and that he can no longer have access to the test. It would be wonderful. Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll... We need to just work on that. That will maybe our, request, our research question for uh, this <laughs> presentation and they seem to see how it works. But again, whenever they submit the test, you see exactly at what time, if I had the time to show you a test, I think we've gone too far. I could go back and show you a test and I show you, show you the results because it shows that Anistine submitted the test at 8.30. Uh, Philip gave his at uh, 12.30. Um, Caroline submitted hers and it gives you the exact time of submission of the test. So you can also work on that. So you might tell your okay. student if I realize that you submitted because you see at what time exactly the test was submitted to you. Okay, that is yes. great. Yes, that so great. you can tell them that if I see that you, the test is ending at three, if I see that you submitted at three, uh, five minutes past three, you might have like minus one. If you submit, you might have, anyway, you need to train them and work with them that way. It depends on the class classroom culture you have with your student. So, I think... Um, thank you. Oh, Wonderful presentation. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Anestine. I'd like to thank all of you for participating in this uh, presentation. I hope it's going to be very helpful to you. And if you have uh, questions, you can still ask. And we have our WhatsApp group where we can uh, continue discussing about uh, this. So, uh, Julia... Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. So I suggest any more um, questions go on to the WhatsApp group because I think we all now need to go. Um, it was a great presentation and um, I think it's really important to start considering ways that we can assess um, our learners online, you know, due to the current COVID-19 situation because enabling um, students to do tests assessment online, of, of course, avoids all that paperwork and all that hygienic, you know, the hygiene reasons are, um, around why we should not be giving papers out and taking them back. Um, and um, why, you know, and also the fact that we can't have so many um, learners in a room like we used to as well. So that also helps, you know, um, that current factor that we're living in. Um, but of course, one of the issues is, you know, how many students do have adequate connectivity to participate. Um, so I think in, in our countries, we need to, you know, lobby the Ministry of Education, lobby the Ministry of Communications, lobby the telecoms um, companies to be able to provide more internet access um, and make it more accessible for our students to take part in these um, kind of activities for their education. No, just go to your original document. Yeah. Then there is a page two there. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I'll stop. Thank you very much, Julia. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, thank you everybody. Yeah.